Hello, welcome to 3D MDS Academy. To get started, visit our website, click on your address bar, enter 3D-MDS-Academy.com. Once in, click on the register button. To register, you can choose any of the social login icons like Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google Plus. Once you log in, you can register for any of the free courses. If you just registered to this website, on the left, you can see the sidebar for your activity, profile, notifications, forums, courses, settings, achievements, and logout button. Click on the courses to get started. If you haven't purchased any course yet, your profile course will be empty. To register for any course, click on the online button on the top header. Select which course you would like to register for then select Take this course. Go back to the Courses tab and voila! All registered courses are shown. Each course contains lessons, quizzes or a combination of both depending on what you have registered for. Click on the course to begin your first lesson. If you successfully finish the whole course, you will receive a certificate and a badge. A lesson consists of tutorial videos, reading materials, and or quizzes. Each lesson must be marked completed before you can move to the next topic or quiz. To improve learning retention, we strongly advise that you revisit the information in the reading materials or quizzes as many times as possible. A score of 80% is required to pass each quiz. We do encourage you to take a look at the provided quiz feedback on the results page. This feedback provides a prognosis of your strengths and weaknesses. Try to read more on your weak areas to improve your success in the final exams. Let's explore our dashboard a little more. Activity is one of the features allowing users to interact with each other in real time. When a course is tied to a group, course actions are optionally added to the group's activity stream. On your wall, you can see all the articles posted, news feeds, and all your likes similar to Facebook. Let's explore the Profile tab. This feature allows users to edit and change profile photo, including the cover image. You can also link your social account on this page. Pick Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google account and agree to the privacy policy to link your social media to your account. Click on the settings to change your password, allow friends to find you, and many more. The Achievements tab allows you to see your badges and recognitions attained during your learning. For instance, if you attain a 100% test result, you are awarded a badge plus a perfect score token. This makes the learning more fun than a chore. The ability to interact with others makes learning so much more fun. At 3D MDS Academy, we allow learners to collaborate, make friends, 
and spread their joy of learning. E-learning doesn't have to be so lonely anymore. So let's get social. Share and like the lessons, topics, articles to earn more points. Now let's get into the CMRP exam practice test. Click on the Start Quiz button. If a machine is running for a thousand hours and five failures are observed during this period, what's the mean time between failure? It is the total time divided by the number of failures and that's equal to 200. Great, got it right. Next one. Which one of the following Metrics definitions is not accurate. A. Backlog. How long it takes to fix broken equipment. B. MTBF. A measure of or indicator of equipment life expectancy. C. Scheduled compliance. How often mechanics are pulled off their current work to another task. C. Uptime. Percentage of time you run producing quality products at design rates. I think the correct answer is backlog. How long it takes to fix broken equipment. Next question. Which of the following does not support people development? A. Defining results areas, goals and measurements. I think this is all right. B. Coaching, feedback, and encouragement. I think this is also okay. C. Defining training and skills goals. This sounds good. Next one. Providing feedback only when asked. This is an odd one. So I'm going to choose this. Providing feedback only when asked as my answer. Next question. A skills audit is undertaken to A. Help an organization to understand skills in its industry. B. Develop employee training plans for the next year. C. Benchmark skills against other companies. And D. Help organization understand skills it requires. I think the correct answer is D. Help an organization understand skills it requires. Great. Got it right. Moving on. What does the picture below represent? I think this is a fishbone diagram. Looking at the answer options, there is no fishbone in the options. What is the other name for fishbone diagram? I think it's Ishikawa diagram. Great. Got it right. Next question. A large manufacturing company installed some asset monitoring devices on some large models that were deemed critical equipment. The monitoring devices provide engineering with vibration data, acoustic data, as well as operational performance data. What asset management strategy has the company selected for the models? In this one, I am not quite sure. So I'm going to go with the process of elimination. I'll start with the first one, CBM. Condition-based maintenance, PDM, predictive maintenance. This option sounds like a good one. I will keep it in my back pocket. Next one, OBM, operational-based maintenance, and CM, corrective maintenance. Well, the fact that it talks about corrective maintenance, I don't think this is a good answer. So I'm gonna eliminate this one. Next one, PM, preventive maintenance, or OBM, operator-based maintenance. Because it talks about PM, preventive maintenance is based on regular intervals. So if you're going to use vibration data and use operational data, it's going to be more of condition based rather than preventive maintenance interval. So I'm going to eliminate this answer option. The next one is CBM, condition based maintenance and corrective maintenance. This also sounds like a good answer. So now, 
I have eliminated answer number B and C. I'm left with answer number A and D. Which to choose? Du, 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 du. Okay. Now, since D talks about corrective maintenance, I am going to eliminate answer D. So, my correct answer is going to be A, according to my guess. Anyway, let's check it out. Great. I got it. Next question. With series systems, reliability blank as the number of components increases. Option A decreases, B increases, C remains constant, and D is undefined. In my mind, reliability will decrease as the number of components increase. The correct answer is A. Next question. What relationship should maintenance and reliability teams have with customers and suppliers for optimum effectiveness? Option A. Sales should be the only department communicating with customers. Option B. Team members should be involved in communicating with customers and suppliers. Option C. Purchasing should be the only communicators with suppliers and option D management should be the only communicators with customers and suppliers the industry standards expect that team members will all be involved in communicating with customers so I'm going to choose answer number B that's right next question a system with parallel structure have built-in redundancy components are backed up and system will work even if some of the components fail to function. Which of the following statements is true? Option A. True for parallel systems only. B. False for all parallel and series systems. C. True for all parallel and series systems. None of these for option D. This is a tricky question. Since they are talking about redundancy, it only applies to parallel systems and therefore I'm going to choose option A true for parallel systems let's check it out great I got it right moving on to the next question which one of the following is generally true option A most mechanics can easily alternate between doing capital project work and doing equipment diagnosis and repair work Reliability centered maintenance can be applied on capital projects in the pre-construction stage to determine the maintenance plan. This is absolutely true. Option C. Maintenance is often reduced through project designs that provide in-place spares for all rotating equipment and heat exchangers. Well, hmm, let's look at option D. Construction contractors are usually equally skilled at performing all maintenance tasks. I think this is not true. So I'm left with options B and C. And I have a 50% chance of making it. So I'm just going to pick option B. Let's check it out. Great. It's the correct answer. Now that I'm done with this practice test. I can choose to review the questions and change my answers if I have any doubts. But since I'm 100% confident, I'm going to click continue or finish quiz to see my results. On the results page, I know I can tell that I got 100%. Now I can also see that on average, most CMRP test takers on this website achieve only 83% so that means I am above average let's look at the categories if you look at these categories you realize that these represent the pillars so pillar number one two three four and five I can tell that I don't have any weakness when it comes to all the five pillars and so I am pretty happy with my results if you'd like to see more of the free practice test, please sign up on my website 3d-mds-academy.com
The unique thing about signing up for the CMRP practice test is that you are given a mock exam. In this mock exam, you are provided with 110 practice questions and two and a half hours to complete it, similar to the official exam. And any time you take this mock exam, you get a different set of questions and that really gets you ready to challenge the CMRP exam. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like or subscribe to my channel for more options.